Hello! Thank you so much for joining me. Um, this week I don't have a sewing project for you. I actually have something a little bit different. I decided to make jewelry, specifically necklaces for my dolls, and I wanted to show you how I did that. Unfortunately there is a little bit of footage where I got out of camera because I was fighting with tweezers and not paying enough attention. However, hopefully you'll be able to kind of get the gist of it. Without further ado, here we go. I figured I'd start off by showing you the supplies I plan to use. Um, first up is the thing that actually inspired this project. I found these absolutely perfect sized gems. I love them, so I wanted to make necklaces out of them. So then we've got our chain, we've got the lobster clasps, some little pins with flat ends, um, some spacer beads, some actual cute beads, some eye pins, so a little bit different than the other ones. We've got some more adorable charms that were the right size, and some slightly bigger ones for our bigger girls because I could not resist that little key. And we've got two flat pliers. They do not have grips on the inside. I prefer them that way. They do less damage. A needle nose pliers, same story. Some jewelry pliers. They have that kind of round, all the way around look. And some wire cutters. Now, the first thing I do is take my chain out and get it into a big giant knot. I honestly can't recommend the knot part. Um, might want to be a little careful with this and not follow in my footsteps because yeah I end up fighting with it a lot so much so in fact we're gonna we're gonna skip a lot of that footage because you don't need to watch me fight with it all right movie magic it's suddenly not in a huge knot and moving on I also need jump rings, which are something that I had, and I knew I had. My jump rings are stainless steel because I specifically use them for making um, chain mail. However, they work for all kinds of things. So they're a little bit harder to use than the generic -y kind of whatever metal alloy, mystery metal they make stuff in the jewelry section at Michael's and Joanne's out of. Um, but they're a lot stronger too and since I already had them I didn't figure I needed to buy more. Now first thing we need to do is figure out exactly how long we want our necklace to be. So I just grab my tape measure, I grab my doll, she is still decked out for Christmas because well this was recorded before Christmas. And now one thing to keep in mind, especially when you're making jewelry for dolls, is that your clasps and your jump rings will it will add length. So if you need a specific length, and you usually do for dolls, you want to include that. So you can see I'm kind of lining things up how I know I'm going to use them to give myself an idea. Our chain ended up being right around 11 centimeters and now I have some trouble because normally I like to just open up one of the links in the chain and that way I can salvage my links. I did that for a good portion of this project but near the end realized that it was absolutely not worth it and that I could just as well use the wire cutter sacrifice a link and save myself a lot of heartache. It's much easier to open your jump rings and then slip them into the chain ring than it is to open your chain rings. Um, yeah, I kind of, my camera doesn't like to zoom, so I apologize, it's pretty blurry, but those are some pretty tiny little rings and they're kind of a funny shape too, depending on the kind of chain you get. So. It's not always worth salvaging them. 
especially when you're literally salvaging a millimeter. I guess dolls are small, a millimeter can affect things, but eh, not that much. And now I'm opening up my jump ring. I do apologize, a lot of this was off camera because I didn't realize that I wasn't under the camera. I will do better next time. But you slip your jump ring into the ring of the chain and you slip your lobster clasp onto the jump ring and then you close it back up again. Then we grab one of our cute little gems and this again is like the jump ring. It's much easier to open the bigger ring and then close it again and then just thread your chain through it. I think that gives it a really nice look. And then we take our larger jump ring and put it on the other end for our lobster clasp to hook onto. Yeah, you can see me struggling with the stainless steel. <laughs> It's a little springy, so it's kind of hard to, like, it doesn't just stay in place. You have to overshoot it and then let it bounce back. And of course I gave her the red gem to match her cute little red hat and her cute little flamingo's red hat. And it fits perfect. Finding stuff for doll jewelry is really just a matter of sweep through the jewelry section every now and then, see what new stuff they have, find something tiny in the right proportions. Um, you can also make your own things though. Like this is just a regular bead. It's not a small bead either. And I'm putting it onto the end of one of the, the pins with the flat end. You see it doesn't fall off because the flat end still holds it on. You want to make sure you get a flat end that's wide enough. I have had them beads just fly right off of them because <laughs> the proportions weren't right. But now we need to finish off the end. So I measure out about uh, one centimeter and I use my wire cutter to snip the extra off. And as an added touch, I do like to sand down the wire cut end because they do tend to be a little on the sharp side. And once it's sanded down, you can slip your bead back on. And these are the wire uh, the the jewelry pliers. They're completely round all the way around, so that you can just uh, clamp onto the tip, and then you curl it around the actual pliers to give yourself a nice round hole to slip your chain through. And now you've made yourself your own custom little pendant. This is, incidentally, something that you can do with human-sized jewelry, too, if you have designs in mind. Um, but yeah, it looks quite nice. If you want to change up the design, maybe add a little bit of fun design elements. They make these little spacers, too. I know a lot of people don't even know what they are when they're going through the jewelry section, but they tend to be bead spacers and just general decorative items. They also make little bead caps which are super cute. Uh, I don't tend to get them as much because you have to have the right size bead to fit in them, but they don't always look like bead caps when they're hanging on a string. They just look like an oblong bead. So it's worth uh, playing around with the beads at the store and see if they split in half. Uh, you can find some really cool stuff just by looking a little closer. But yeah, even with the spacers now, that bead looks way different. I mean, to me, I don't know. <laughs> uh, the other thing we have are the eyelet ones that already have an eyelet on the end. So we do the same step again, measure out about a centimeter. sand down our rough edges 
and then we add our own eyelet on the other end. And this gives you a different kind of look. You can suspend this between two different chains and it actually looks quite nice. I'm so bummed I was off camera for this. I'm sorry guys. But yeah, see, and my eyelets don't quite match up, so I smoosh one between one player's and one between the other's and just force them into line. And now you can kind of see, you just put one chain on one side and one on the other, and it makes a different style. You want to adjust your measurements for your chains, of course. And uh, as soon as I looked away, I forgot where, <laughs> where I had picked out. I was still fighting with opening those links. Really, honestly, don't worry about losing a link. Just grab the wire cutter. It's probably fine. I sort of jumped ahead a little ways. Just finishing up getting the last. There, so now you can see why it looks so different. It looks like it's suspended in the middle of the chain as opposed to just dangling off of it. Um, just some ideas, different ways to do things, and then finishing up the chain to go around the doll's neck is pretty much the same as the other ones, you just put the small jump ring on one end with the lobster clasp and the big one on the other end so the lobster clasp has something to hook on to, and you're good to go. And there she is. And these are just a whole bunch of the different necklaces I was able to make. Uh, some kind of playing around with different designs. I had some other beads that I raided to see what I could find. I just love the key. I could not resist the key. It's so cute. And of course the little crown was pretty adorable too. This one actually came with the cap. It was just, that's how they were selling those beads, so I thought that was kind of a nice touch. Uh, that's one of the ones we made. You can see the difference between the spacers and without. And our suspended bead. There's one of the little seahorses. There's this suspended bead with spacers. Some of those cute little skull beads. I don't know if you've ever been in Michael's, they seem to always have them. And I found some big spacer beads, so I put those with the little spacer beads and I thought it made kind of a fun effect. And the little ones working with little beads. And I figured I'd show you a few of the dolls wearing their new Christmas presents. This is Iris. She is a Fairyland Feeple 65 doll. Uh, I love her to pieces and I thought that key was the perfect proportion for her. She is kind of on the bigger side, so she gets one of the bigger ones. This is Carmen. She is a Supia doll on the double jointed body. Um, the, the regular SD size, not the big one. Uh, I absolutely love her. She has the original tan skin, which is a discontinued color. Um, but yeah, she got the drop necklace. I thought it suited her classy look. This is Esme. She is a Fairyland Mini Fee Chloe. Uh, very popular sculpt and I think for a reason. I think she's absolutely adorable and the smaller necklaces definitely suit her perfectly. 
And this is Minji. She is a Bemong Narai, I think. I honestly don't know how to pronounce it. I'm so sorry. But she is absolutely fantastic. She's one of my newer dolls and I love her to absolute pieces. So she is showing off one of the gems. Anyway, I did just want to say thank you so much for sitting with me today and please hit like and subscribe if you want to see more fun doll content. Have a great one.